graph the semicircle y equals the square root of 4 minus x squared. In order to answer this question, it's really good to remember how exactly we define a semicircle. Now remembering that we, we define a top semicircle, top semicircle as an algebraic form where we have y equals the square root of r squared minus x squared. We said that this, we define this as the top half of a circle and that circle had a radius of radius r with center at the origin. The origin. Okay, well here we have a, uh, in this yellow expression, we have an expression which resembles very much this orange expression down here. We've got a y equals square root and then underneath we've got something minus x squared but the r squared and the 4 here are different. And so let's see if we can turn this yellow expression into something resembling more this orange expression by converting this 4 into something squared. So we might think, what is the square root of 4? Or what, times if, what number times itself equals 4? And of course that's 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So we could rewrite this as y equals the square root of 2 squared minus x squared. Well, now that we have this form looks very much like this orange form here, so now we could say that y equals 2 squared minus x squared. Well, this is the top half of a semicircle, so top half, sorry, top half of a circle, top half of a circle whose radius is Instead of r, it's going to be 2, because we've got 2 squared here instead of r squared. Radius 2, and the center remains at the origin. So all that's left to do now is to graph this. So what we can do is we can draw up a set of axes here. And remember, we always label our axes. So we'll say this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis. And we're going to draw the top half of a circle. So we'll say that this is is minus 2, minus 1, this is 1, this is 2, here this is 1, this is 2. So we've got our semicircle at the origin, it's the top half of the semicircle. Certainly the x-intercepts are going to be 2 units left and right of the origin, and 0 units up or down, and the y-intercept will be at 0 units left and right of the origin and 2 units up at this point here. Now we won't fill this point in. The reason we have filled in the x-intercepts, we put solid dots here at the two x-intercepts, is to indicate that they are indeed a part of the function. If they were hollow points, uh, or if, if we just if we didn't have solid points here, it might be unclear whether or not they are part of the function, uh, because the line doesn't completely pass through them, it, it simply stops at them. But for this y-intercept, because the, the line or this curve passes through this y-intercept, it'll be quite obvious that it is indeed part of the function. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is actually draw this. So we can draw it by hand. It's going to go through two units there, come back down here. So that's not perfect, but it's never perfect when you're graphing by hand. You might want to use a compass if you're doing this uh, with a pen and paper. But that, that broadly represents the yellow function above here, y equals the square root of 4 minus x squared.